All right, hello, hello, welcome everyone. And um, today we're doing a lunch with Laura. I have um, a little bit of a sore throat, so I'm gonna try to um, keep that under control, but I just wanted to warn you ahead of time. Um, but today what we're doing is we're working in Jowie Lim's Friends of Nature. Um, it's a PDF coloring book that was released uh, quite some time ago, but I've done a lot of pages. If you look on my Instagram account, you'll see I've done quite a lot of pages in her book already. And um, this was a request um, to work on this page, so I thought it would be um, something fun that we could do in a Lunch with Laura stream. Um, hopefully we'll get most of this done today, um, but we'll see how far I can get. Um, also, fair warning, uh, <laughs> I've never used these um, this gouache before, uh, acrylic gouache is what it's called. Um, I've never ever used this medium. The only thing I've used it for is to make a swatch chart. I did this last night. Um, it's not great, um, but it'll do the job for now. Um, so I'm hoping that I don't make a fool of myself. I have here a wide variety of different um, brushes. These are the brushes I use for acrylics. I didn't want to use my watercolor brushes in case they might ruin the um, the absorbency of the brushes. So I'm using, these are all synthetic um, acrylic brushes that I use for my acrylic painting. Um, welcome everybody. Let's see. Hi Jobeth. Um, I am a little sick, but um, I'm doing okay. I just, I had a rough night last night too. Um, kept waking up and um, so <laughs> yeah we'll see but um, I, I really wanted to do this today um, for a, a sweet friend of mine and um, so I figured I would just go ahead and push on through. Um, hi Nanamo, welcome. Hi Squishy. Um, why are you... That's weird. Squishy, are you on a different account? Er, what happened there? You used to be an admin of mine. I apologize for the street noise. Apparently the trash truck decided to go by just as I started my stream, so that's fun. This is a live show. <laughs> this is a live chat show for anybody who's just coming in. So if you're not used to my channel, um, just a fair warning, I do chat for a little bit before we get started. So I'm just going to kind of rearrange my situation here a bit just so that I can work a little easier so the um, <laughs> the uh, the acrylic wash that we're using today this is called the Turner acrylic wash it comes in a 24 set which is what I have here um, they are these little tubes and um, I will admit I'm fairly intimidated but um, we'll see we'll see how we do I also have some scraps of paper um, for anybody who's probably going to ask, I'm working on the Strathmore Bristol Vellum Surface. Um, and um, let's see here, who else is here? Oh, oh, that's okay. No worries, Nanamo. Hi, Charlotte. How you doing? Welcome. Oh, okay. No problem, Squishy, as long as you're, you're all right. Um, yeah, it's okay guys. I mean, that's part of life when you don't feel good, but, um, we're gonna, we're gonna have some fun. Doesn't matter how you feel, right? You can, you can still enjoy coloring and art no matter, um, what the situation is. So, um, I also have, I'm just going through my supplies. I also have two cups of water. These are, <laughs> these are old cups from a party a long time ago that I saved. I, I don't like wasting anything, especially not plastic. So I reuse them now as um, acrylic painting cups. So that's why they're super dirty. But um, there, there's clean water in both. I'm going to use one for clean water and one for dirty water. Sort of like how you use watercolor. I also have this Mr. Spray Bottle thingy. I use this for acrylic painting to keep my palette wet. I don't know if I'm going to need it, but I figured having it handy is nice. I got this for really cheap, like for a dollar or so at the um, drugstore. Um, let's see, who else is here? Hi Louise, hi Robin, welcome everybody, hello. Thank you all for coming. Hi Katrina, oh, welcome. Um, so we're going to get started pretty soon here. 
that's okay don't be sorry guys i'm totally okay <laughs> we're gonna be just fine um i'm actually more stressed out about the gouache <laughs> the acrylic gouache to be precise um so <laughs> I have never used this stuff, so I, just fair warning, you may not want to follow along with me until you see the end result. <laughs> so if this is, if you're watching this as a recording, just kind of scrub through and look at the end and see if you like it okay before you, oh my goodness. So <laughs> I have a little story about the um, acrylic wash. Before, before we actually get started on this page, just because I'm so nervous and freaked out about this medium. I'm actually going to just play around on some little scraps just to get me going, just so I don't feel so nervous about it. Um, I've only used gouache one other time in my life, and that was for a graphic design class I took in college. And um, let's just say that the um, professor, number one, she didn't like me because I wanted to do my own thing a lot of the times, and um, she didn't like that I was um, I, that I had my own ideas of what I wanted to do for my artwork, so that was interesting. But then number two, um, she, she, um, she was just very strict, very precise, and at that time I was not, um, not very good with being precise, so, um, I kind of have, like, horror flashbacks to using gouache every time I try this medium. <laughs> <laughs> so I have I have avoided using gouache for pretty much my entire life after that. Um, but you know, just because you have a bad experience with something doesn't mean you should um, judge it that way forever. So I'm gonna try it again. I picked up this set a long time ago, hoping to do some tutorials with it, but um, I just I just have not. <laughs> I've not done it. <laughs> Thank you. I'll try. <laughs> no, Louise, I've had these actually for months and months and just avoided using them. <laughs> I bought them myself on Amazon. Um, when the video's over, I'll put all the links in the description below just so you guys can check it out. Um, but yeah, no, I, I've had this set for actually quite a long time. Um, we're, we're doing koi fish. I'm going to put the palette that I'm going to use. So, um, <laughs> yeah, no, I've just, I've just totally avoided using these, unfortunately. Um, so that's just on me. <laughs> um, oh, okay. I'm sorry. I'm, I palletted, this is cobalt blue hue, ultramarine, burnt sienna, and burnt umber. And I'm looking at which of the reds I want to use. I'm probably going to need white as well, but I'll wait on that for a bit. I think permanent scarlet looks like a koi fish color. So I'll palette that as well. And I'm just going to play around with these colors and see how they work together and see how this stuff works. <laughs> Oh my goodness, I'm so nervous. But that's okay guys, you know, it's, it, oh and we, let's see, we've got water and lilies and lily pads, so I'm going to probably need some more blues and greens, so let's throw in, so that was um, permanent scarlet, and I'm going to throw in some sky blue. So the first thing I notice about these is that they flake off real easy when after you've put some color in the cap. <laughs> so just don't get that flaky bit in your paint if you can help it. Okay. Oh, and look, I'm already getting messy, guys. Oh, I need paper towels. Hold on, let me grab a paper towel. Hey, girl, you're being so Oh my goodness, guys. Yeah. <laughs> you've had a pan set you've, you've not used either, Louise. Well, maybe it's time. Um, oh, um, Squishy, it's this red here. It's permanent scarlet, so it's like a nice... It might be called a cadmium red or something else. It's a nice warm red, not one of the cool reds. 
Um, Louise, maybe it's time that you break them out and play with them too. So that was sky blue. It looks a whole lot like phthalo blue and a bunch of other colors. And I'm going to grab viridian hue. Let's try that and see what we got here. So I'll go over the colors again really quick for those of you who are following along. But before I do that, I'm going to mist my palette. I do this with acrylic and I'm guessing since these dry and they're permanent and they don't re-wet, I'm going to do the same thing. So I'm just going to take this little mister and just spritz it. So I can see little water drops on my palette, but it's it's not so runny that the whole thing is running around, but this will keep it from drying out. Um, basically, I do that misting periodically. You're going to see me do that throughout the course of the video. I do it, what I do is I watch and wait for those water droplets to evaporate. And then once they've evaporated, I know that it's no longer moist. So then I just re-wet it. So that's how I keep my palette going. Even though they dry in about 15, 20 minutes, I can keep a palette wet for hours and hours this way with acrylics. So I'm hoping that I can do the same with these. We're gonna just, uh, I'm just making this up. I have no idea. So we'll see if that works. Um, okay, before before we go, I'm just gonna go over the colors that we, we're using again. So. Um, right here is Viridian Hue. This is what it looks like. Right here is Sky Blue. That's what that looks like. Right here I have Cobalt Hue. Blah, blah, blah. Oh gosh, I'm already <laughs> flustered. This is going to be an interesting stream, guys. This is how Laura makes a fool of herself stream. Um, <laughs> so we've got Cobalt Blue Hue. That's this guy here. This one here is Ultramarine, this one here. Um, this guy here is Burnt Sienna. This has some granular effects happening when it gets watered down, which is interesting. And so does this one. Burnt Umber is this one here. I like both of those colors. And then we have Permanent Scarlet on the end here. I'll probably add white to my palette at some point, and I may add one of these other greens, but we'll see. Let's just see how this works out for us so far. So I have a very limited palette. Before we even get going, oh, excuse me. I'm going to play around and have some fun. Hi, Blue Petal. Welcome. Hello, hello. <laughs> Happy New Year, Lulu. Okay, so I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna dip my brush in my clean water. This will be my clean water will be my dirty water. Hopefully you guys can see okay. Let's see here. Yeah, kind of. All right. We'll, uh, <laughs> we'll see if I need to zoom in later, but I kind of want you to see my palette and how I mix. Um, so I'm just going to play around and see how these water down and how they mix. So I'm just using a number eight round and, you know, it's, <laughs> I don't know why I'm so nervous about using these, except for, I guess, my past experience with, with using, okay, so they were kind of like watercolor when you wet them down really far. I don't know, guys. Abby girl, Are you a cutie? Abby can't come up on the table today because of the wet medium thing. So hopefully she stays off of the table and good. All right. Oh, all right. Good girl. Just playing around, seeing how I love using watercolor, and I'm hoping that these kind of play nice like watercolor. Okay, well, they dry slightly differently. Let's see how they work. Oh, well, I see, I see you. Come here, yo. Whoa. Oh, kitty. Hi. 
Hello. Yeah, you can't you can't be up here. I'll hold you though, okay? Let's see how Okay, so Hmm. Oh, I guess that's going to be my dirty water now. Hmm. Let's get my brush list wet. Aha. Okay. So they do they do thicken up if you put less water. All right, Ab. Calm down. Sorry guys, kitty on the shoulder. Let's see who's popped in. Hi Joey, welcome. Hello, hello. Okay, so I think I've got a handle, a little bit of a better idea of how these are gonna work. So I'm going to stop procrastinating. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to move my water cups back. Just know that I, when I wash my brush, I'll be using the dirty cup. And when I'm dipping to get fresh water, I'm going to use my clean cup. May have to get up several times to swap out the dirty water, but that's okay. Okay, let's just make sure everything is in camera as much as possible. So we've got our lady here. Palette. Let's just move these out of the way a little. Okay. I'm debating if I think maybe I should tape this off. What do you think, Ed? Should I tape it off? Let's tape off the outline just to make things a little easier. So I have here this is um, white artist tape. It's by Pro Art. I got it on Amazon, but. Um, you know, just any low tack tape will work. Um, let's let's see. I might have to put Abby down. Let's see if I can do this. Can I do this with you in my arms? Maybe. Abby is so tolerant. As long as I have her in my arms. She's so funny. Yeah. Are you a cutie? Okay. So I'm just doing this so I don't have to be precise. Right down. All right. Yeah, this is a really pretty book. I've had this book for a long time. You can find the link to the book in the description below. I did put that in already. It's by Jowie Lim. She's been around for quite some time. And this book here, I've done a lot of uh, pages from. So you can see them all on my Instagram account. Um, it's called Friends of Nature, and it is so pretty. There's 32 pages, and it is only $9. So it's quite a steal. It's a PDF book. Okay. So there we go. We've taped it off. Uh, let's see here. Let me see if I can just really quickly in the chat link it as well. No, I don't have it. Oh, here it is. Sorry guys, I'm doing everything one-handed of course because I've got little kitty in my arms. Boop. Okay, so there is the link. Oh, thank you, Shannon. Man, you're on top of it. Um, all right. I can't procrastinate anymore, guys. Gotta just buckle down. 
Mm -hmm. All right, so I'm going to start with the background because I like doing that first. So I'm going to, this will be a fairly traditional koi fish kind of page. I'm just trying to, see I haven't really thought about this or made any plans as to what I'm going to do. So, yeah. all right. Maybe I'll, let's start in the corner. You guys know when I'm not sure about things, I start in the corner. So I'll just start over here, work my way over. So I'm just painting plain water in just the background so far. I'm going to go right over her hair though. Oh, got a kitty hair on my brush. That's fun. Okay. Now I'm going to drop some. I'm snagging some cobalt blue. I'm going to drop some of that in. Especially right over here. Okay. And now I'm going to snag some of the sky blue. It's also probably called cerulean in other sets. So if you're using a different gouache set. And maybe some of this viridian I'm going to put down here. Just drop in in color. You can see it just sort of pushes around. See, this is interesting. So let's let's see here. I've got some. I think this is. I don't know what this is, but I make it green down here. That way, if it's part of the lily pad, or I think it's part of the lily pad actually. So let's do this bit and. Let's see, where's the light coming from? This way. So that's that's good because I just did a shadow in that direction. Okay. The, the the way I could tell is you see the shadow under her chin? It's going more towards this side, so the light is coming from that direction. Now you can you can like completely ignore that if you want to. Okay. So I think her hand is going above this lily pad. So I'll just do some shadow work while I'm over here. Okay. I'm sorry I'm not looking at the chat. I will though. Hold on. So if you guys have any questions, don't be afraid to put them in all caps. It may, helps me see them a little easier. And if I do, I'm a little since I'm a little bit flustered today, I might be more likely to miss chat more often. So if I do miss something, um, you know, mods, if you could just uh, give me a heads up, that would be amazing. So if anybody has any questions, just let me know. Okay. So I kind of like how that's looking. Okay, let me look up, see what's going on. Uh, okay, we're good. So now I'm going to work over in this corner. And I don't know what's happening here, but I'm just gonna, I think this is a fence. So I'm just gonna go right on over it. Pretend like it's not even there for right now. And I'm going to do that with all of the fish fins because I want them to feel a little bit transparent. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to do this first layer by just ignoring them completely. Okay, so here's a little section. Just again, wetting it and getting it ready to receive the color. And then... That looks like 
I don't know what that is. Is that her arm? Where's her arm go? Oh yeah, there's her arm. Okay. All right, so now I picked up some cobalt. Let's drop it right over here. And um, that's a little thick, so I'm watering it down more. I want this first layer to be very watery. Just to kind of, I'm going to work the way I do in acrylic, where I work thin, thin layers first and then work my way up to thicker layers. So you can see I'm not worried about going over the lines. If that happens, that's okay. We can always fix it because this is, so this is opaque if you don't water it down. So you can fix mistakes later. Oh, Abby, okay. All right, where are you going? Okay, you want to go down over there? <laughs> Sorry, guys. All right, so now let's drop in. Oh, see, my palette's already getting dry. There we go. So let's see here. I'm going to, and so is the paper. Oh, that's really dark. Okay, there's a lot going on right here. Where, what's happening? What is happening? I'm just gonna ignore all of that. And this, there we go. So you can still see the line work through that. Let me just kind of mix these two colors together so it doesn't feel weird that they're separated by that fishy. So I'm, I'm using the ultramarine right now. I'm going to try my best to call out the colors as I do them. But you guys can see my palette, right? Yeah, you can see it. Okay, good. So if I forget, just uh, recall back to when I gave that info. So we've got her arm goes through this fin here. Okay. So I'm just kind of guessing where that elbow would be. And again, just drawing right straight through all the fins and even the hair. There's like a corner of her elbow here. Like so. And here's where her arm goes. Like that. I hope that this is coming across okay see here. Okay, so this does not lift up, so once you put it down, that's it. Okie dokie. Permanent. That is different. <laughs> okay. It's alright, I'll figure it out. I'm just so used to lifting with watercolor. You can't do that. Okay, so you can see how I just like put her hand there like that. Okay, so let's keep going over on this side here. Oh, I don't have any water down. Let me really quickly see if I can do this really fast. So I just dipped into my clean water. Alright, so now we have this section here. What is this? This is, is that hair? 
sorry guys, this is a little bit, this is a very detailed page. All right, let me just wet this spot. I know I gotta do this spot. And we'll come back to that. All right, so how's everybody's Monday going? Mine has been a crazy day, but I'm glad to take a break. I still have some work to do, but I'm just gonna see. I might just end up working late. I really wanted to do this. Oh, sorry, I went into my cobalt blue here. I'm leaning more towards the cool side of the spectrum when it comes to these blues. Oops, I went through that stem. That's okay. Okay, let's add some more green. So you can kind of see I've been adding the greens around the lily pads just to sort of like give them sort of some like, um, like they're having an effect on the water around them. What? Oh no. Okay, that's okay. Be fine. What is happening? So that's a bit of hair. I don't know. Oh, here, I see. So this is a bit of water behind the lily pad, I think. I hope I was right on that. Okay, well, too late now. Um, all right. <laughs> Don't know what I'm doing, guys. But we're going to be just fine. All right, so let's put some... Just to cover up that mess there, I put some uh, ultramarine. I'll we'll just do that to both corners. This one's a little lighter, but that's fine. It does not have to be symmetrical. Okay, so we have our base layer of water. That's going to help separate the figure from the background and kind of give us a sense of where everything goes and what everything is. Um, okay, I think I should do, uh, let's see. Hello, Nana Mo, welcome back. <laughs> Thanks, I'm glad you like the color. Okay, so let's really quickly do the shadows on the figure. Um, in this watery, wet, washy kind of thing. Actually, I think I'm going to do that all over. So let's establish our light source. Let me just really quick. Uh, I'm going to do that with this cobalt blue color. So everywhere where there's going to go shadows, I'm going to use this cobalt blue. So um, let's see. Let's start. Where should I start? Let's start at the bottom. So, can you guys see this okay? Yeah. So right now I haven't decided what the spot colors are going to be or anything like that. But that's okie dokie. We're just doing a blue shadow over everything. And um, I have a lot of water and not very much pigment. I'm going to layer this until it looks the way I want it to. So I'm using these very much like watercolors. Just trying to soften some lines before it dries. Okay. Uh, no, that was the wrong color. Got a cobalt again. Let's dip into this 
area here so it's a lot darker there so let's just do the same right there and I'm gonna push this pigment around so it gets lighter actually let's do her whole neck is gonna be in shadow this part right above the, the dark part of her collarbone this whole side of her face especially under the hair let's see we're running out of color I'm gonna pull what's there and just pick it up you can do that while it's wet but once it dries I think you're you're out of luck so I'm working quick here so I left just a little triangle there divided the rest of her face up I'm gonna put some take a little up from up here put some color right there in the uh, the corner of her eye right under her nose right under her mouth here okay like so we're going to give her some shadows this fish is casting shadows she's got like a cute little tummy there so let's give her some depth a little bit okay under this fish he's going to get a shadow under this fishy let's give him a better shadow so I'm just walking you guys through where I'm going to put all my dark areas and this will really really give us a great guide as we layer this this piece up and develop it more okay let's work on this arm back here so we're gonna do some shadows and again I'm just working right through the fish fins for now so there's a let's blur that a little because there's actually a fish body right here here we go okay uh, a little bit more darkness right under the hairline and over here so I don't know if these dry darker or lighter or I'm guessing darker but we'll find out okay there's a little bit of a waterline there <laughs> um, hi Robert welcome <laughs> all right so we did the figure at least got some idea of where the shadows are going to go and now let me put let's let's do the same thing so I'm just roughing everything in so let's do the same thing with the flowers and Joey has given us some hints as to where shadows go so that's easier but since we're using opaque medium we can we could change the light source if we felt like it so that's entirely up to you all right all right let's see here flower here this one almost feels like it's underwater I can't really tell what's underwater and what's out of the water here but I'm not worrying too much about reality so We've got a koi fish mermaid here, so it can be surreal. No worries. Alright, and let's 
see, the only thing left we have are the fishies, so let's do those really quick. So that fishy gets some shadows. And I'm also going to put some right here. Because he's at the bottom of the composition. Like that. And like that. So again, the light is coming from this direction, so we just sort of keep that in mind. And I'm just kind of starving my brush of color as we go up closer to the light source it'll get lighter. Let's actually snag some from down here while it's still wet. Okay, and then this guy up here is going to be quite light. All right, so now the only thing we haven't put shadows on are the lily pads, but they're fairly flat. Oh, look, I missed a spot. See, this is why I like doing this, because then I find places where I've missed things. And her hair doesn't have any shadow yet, so let's do that really quick. Um, making sure I'm still alive. The chat seems very quiet. Sorry guys if I'm boring you. Okay. <laughs> oh, we're running, we're starting to get hardened, so I'm just going to mist again. Hopefully not dry out my palette. So, since this is an underwater image, I'm giving everything this really beautiful cobalt blue kind of shadow. But you'll see, once we add the colors on top, it won't look so blue. We're just doing that for now to get us an idea, a sense of what, what's what. I've been on such a blue kick lately. I mean, that's not hard for me to do. I, I use blue a lot in my work, but I have a feeling this year is going to have a lot of blue in it. So if you don't like blue, you might want to not watch my channel. <laughs> I have another page I'm planning on doing that will be blue. Okay, so I went too crazy. Let's uh, Let's see if I can lift it before... Just spread it around. Yeah, there we go. So it's not so harsh. Okay. So it doesn't really lift, but you can kind of push it around a little. So I kind of saved that. All right. It's okay if you make a mistake, you can work on it. I'm just making this a little bit darker back here. And back here. Okay, I think everything has shadows except for the lily pads. Let's give them a little bit of a darker. Kind of want the lily pads to kind of fade into the back a little. So I'm going to give them just an overall coat of this ultramarine. Okay, I definitely see brush strokes here. Let me see if I can fix that. It's interesting. I kind of like the blue lily pads, actually. Alright. 
doesn't have to be realistic, guys. We can do whatever we want. So right now I've just used one brush for the whole thing. So we'll see if I need to switch brushes later, but for right now, I'm just still working with an eight round. Trying to keep my supplies on this limited. Alright, so just like when I use marker, as soon as I get the whole page covered, it really does help me see where everything is, especially this has got a lot of detail in it. And this was a requested page. I'm glad that it was requested. I don't know if I would have chosen it myself. But I quite like it. It's a very pretty page. And I was like, yeah, I haven't worked in this book in a while. So thank you. You know who you are who requested it. Okay. All right, guys. So we've got, thanks, Nanamo. Oh, thank you, Natalie. I'm glad you guys like the blue. Um. Yes, Louise. Picasso definitely, um, definitely had a blue period. I have a blue life, I guess, because I use blue my whole life. <laughs> Blues and greens. It's really funny. Um. <laughs> but, okay. <laughs> well, luckily, it's not a whole room of blue. It's just a, a, a page, a small page at that. Okay. So now that we have the base layer down, it looks pretty bad, but we're gonna, it's okay, we're gonna get through this, guys. So let's work on the figure. I think that's probably the thing that everybody is the most intimidated by, especially because she's got a lot of skin here. So I'm going to use this ultramarine marine blue. You guys can see my palette okay? Let's make sure. So you can see here, I've got like this ultramarine blue and it is super bright. I want to knock it back a little and make it less bright. So I'm going to mix in some of my burnt sienna is what this thing is calling it. And it makes like this nice bluey brown. Mm -hmm. that's, a, that's a technical term. Now it's not the same brown here. Let me show you. So we've got this brown here, which we just made. It's not the same brown as the burnt umber, which is similar, but not the same. This is much more saturated. It's also a lot less, less watered down. Let's water it down some. But you can see this is like a much less saturated color. So I'm, now we, we're going to be mixing. Let's uh, get that off my brush. So we're mixing ultramarine blue and burnt sienna. Burnt sienna is such a nice, rich, orangey brown. I use it a lot for skin tone. But I want to mix in the, the blues that we're using. Okay, so now I've got this big watery puddle. There we go. So I've, I'm taking some of my half and half mixture and now I'm mixing another half of it in with, so it's basically 25% ultramarine and 75% burnt sienna. It's giving me like this nice pretty brown. So let's go in and I'm gonna start under the chin cause it's gonna be a fairly dark spot here still using these like watercolors still using the same brush this is really dark but
but we're gonna it's gonna start to lighten up as we we uh, the their pigment goes out of the brush. I call it starving the brush because the brush is nice and full, and then you start to starve it from having color. Okay, so before those dry, I'm cleaning off my brush a little bit, dabbing it on a paper towel so it's dry, and then just going over the edges and softening them. I don't want those harsh lines. So now we're just adding another watercolory layer of more shadow depth to understand even more where, where we're going to put the shadows. So we're not really using the opacity of the pigment. It's a very transparent layer still. You can still see the drawing through. But it's definitely a lot darker, and now we're adding that brown. Okay, it's already starting to dry, and now I can't move it around, so that's what we're going to get there. Mm -hmm. All right, grabbing some more. Just got a little bit of a... Uh, muscle there. So I want her shoulder to have this highlight. Okay, now we're dipping into a more saturated color here. For this shadow which is on her hands and I find hands to be a little bit more saturated in color than other areas. Now I'm going to water that down. For the other bits on the top. Okay. So what is everybody working on? I'm guessing since we have a quiet crew that we've got people working on stuff. here so this spot so the rib cage gets like this glow on it but it's not I don't want her to be like super skinny she's got some curves to her Okay. Uh, oh yeah, I need to look at chat, don't I? Uh huh. Uh, let's see. Hi, Faithful. Um. <laughs> You're doing a Johanna Johanna Basford page for pickle, huh? Nice, Nanamo. Um. 
you wanted to go to art classes. Okay, Robin. Uh, oh, excuse me, guys. This is unusual. I'll be right back. All right. <laughs> no, never a dull moment. It looks like he had a s inspector with him. All right. So I'm just mixing up more of that color since uh, I added a little bit of the burnt umber now. Oh my. <laughs> You're going to do uh, Dee's three month challenge. <laughs> yes, Shanna. He, he's a really nice guy. His name is John. Um. <clears throat> okay, so where was I? So we've got hardly any of this ultramarine left. I'm going to have to put more down. And it looks as though we are There we go. Okay. Uh Oh, you have me, Robin. Oh. Well, I'm not I'm not a um an art school, that's for sure. I'm self-taught, so, you know, you can't you know, take everything I say with a grain of salt, for sure. Um, okay, so let's see here. Where was I? I don't really remember. Oh, that's right. Um, so we have here the arm back here. Let's see, that's a little dark, so let's just, oh no keep doing that. Well, not, not very tidy, that's for sure. All right. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, comp book 2020. Yeah, I've seen her doing that, Faithful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't have the time for it either. I've been doing a sketchbook, though. I can show you guys that. Here, let's do that really quick. I'm going to need to add some more color to my palette, so I'm just going to miss that really fast. So, um... Sketch Cantation here in the chat and I, we've been working on um, a sketchbook challenge. Um, I just want to finish a sketchbook this year. A lot of the times I'll buy a sketchbook and then I'll work on it and I'll complete about half of it and then I abandon it for a new sketchbook. And So this year um, we started, so I already have this page here and I did this page yesterday 
and I started sketching this this morning so I haven't it, we've only got I've only got three pages done in it but um, this is something that um, Squishy and I are doing together just to kind of have some fun um, you know keeping up with our sketchbook so I'm gonna try and fill that one so that I can do a proper sketchbook tour because a lot of the time in my sketchbooks oh no this is bleeding through well that's okay um, clearly I'm messy so I'm, I might just have to cut this out when I'm done <laughs> um, but yeah <laughs> oh my all right so I'm gonna add some more colors to my palette at this point and um, so I'm adding more ultramarine, which is what we were using before. Um, yeah, I bounce around in a lot of sketchbooks as well. I have several that I work in at once, um, but I, I do want to try and finish that one this year. So let's see. So I, I'm using that, that ultramarine. Now I want to start working on the skin tone. Um, see here. <laughs> I'm just reading the chat. I think I missed a whole bunch of stuff. Yeah, comp books are usually 100 pages. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, I didn't see that. That's interesting. Cool, Faithful. I'll have to check it out. Um, all right, so I want to create a skin tone, so I'm going to add some white to my palette just so I can mix it. And I have this permanent scarlet. Is it dried out? Let's just see what color that makes really quickly. Right. So I'm going to probably need Let's see. So she's a koi fish. So I'm thinking about making her on the pinkier side of things. So I think her skin tone is going to be a combination of this um, white. I'm going to add a bunch more white because I usually use so much more white than anything else. Okay, so I'm going to use a combination of white, this permanent scarlet, so it's the skin tone is white, permanent scarlet, and burnt sienna mixed together. And we're gonna we're gonna go for it. Um, now with <laughs> with acrylic, I know it dries slightly darker and it dries quickly. So you need to kind of work quickly. So now I have less water mixed in. Let's start down here just to kind of get ourselves going yet. So it's more opaque now. We've got, I have no idea what I'm doing. This is a little bit darker than what I was thinking, but let's just make it look intentional by now mixing in permanent scarlet right in. So it's gonna be a koi fishy spot. Okay. So the thing I didn't like about gouache before and I'm finding it to be troublesome now is it does get streaky. Maybe it's just how I'm using it, I don't know. Okay, I want to add little bit of this blue to the edge here. Okay. Kind of like a muted purple. 
I like that. I want to make that spot white, I think. So let me... What I'm going to do is just add some pure white to a little bit of cobalt blue to make a really pale blue. And then dip a little bit of our skin tone into that. Nope, too much. So let's add some more cobalt. Now I'm running out of cobalt. Hold on. Let me, oh, I'm misting. Okay, yeah, that's the color I want. Now I'm just gonna mix in a bunch of white to it. There we go. All right, I'm gonna make this spot white as well. Now it's, they're both in the shadows, so that's why I mixed some blue in and some skin tone to kind of, um, and now to blend the edges, I'm, I just picked up some more skin tone on a dirty brush. Just going right around it. Okay. Let's add a little bit more skin tone. Okay, so this might not be very good. We'll find out. I'm having a rough day today, it looks like. Okay, well, we're going to make the most of it. So what I do like is her, her skin has a lot of blue in it, which makes sense for the situation, the environment. But... I feel like we definitely need to keep working on it. Uh, <laughs> thanks, Nunamo. Um, yep. What's funny is, um, you know, all these prompts and all these different challenges, that's all awesome. But to me, I've always been doing daily doodling where I just literally always have been drawing every day. So I don't really need some prompt to make me do it. I just, I just do it on my own. <laughs> so it's kind of good. Oh, too much color there. This is definitely a highlight. So <laughs> we'll see what just, what I just did there. Okay. Now I'm adding that skin tone mixed with just a bit of blue, more skin tone than blue, and all the shadowy-ish spots.
Okay, so I lost some of our highlights, but that's okay. Luckily this is an opaque, it's an opaque medium. So we're just going to build it back up, but let's put the same color on her face as well. Just to make sure that we keep her consistent. You guys know I work all over, all at once. Um, okay, so her, that looks a little too brown now. Let me add a little bit of ultramarine just to the underside here, and a little bit of our skin tone color right here on the edge to blend it out. And this hand is so little. It's actually pretty challenging. Okay, so now at her elbow I'm going to put a little more of that more saturated color. Like so. Also just under her breast there. Man, that is one strategically placed fish. That's for sure. Okay, and her nose is also really tiny. So it starts out real messy, but by layering and layering, I'm sort of now using these kind of like watercolor, but not. But as the pink gets more opaque, I'm going to have to start using it like it's acrylic instead. Okay, so that's way too harsh, so let me lift it really quick before it goes permanent. Okay, can't lift it, so I'm going to paint over it really quick. So I have my skin tone color. Ugh, making a mess. There we go. A bit better. We will fix that when it's dried out a little more, but let me just add a little bit of white right there just to retain. There we go. It's already better. I'll fix that when it's a little drier. So don't worry if you make a mistake. Mistakes are normal. Okay, so right now I've just been working on just her skin tone and I'm ignoring the other features. But I will I will do her other features soon, because right now I'm like painting over them, it looks kind of funny. Okay. I hope you guys can see this okay. Um... <laughs> Pickle, welcome. Hello, hello. Um, zoom. Okay, I can zoom. You won't be able to see me mixing on my palette though, but I can do that. Let's go ahead and zoom. And I'll adjust the camera a little bit. There you go. So you can see a little bit better. Hopefully. Maybe. So I'm thinking about making her hair white, but I want to add some more koi fishy kind of colors. So let's, I'm taking my permanent scarlet, mixing a little bit of white into it. So 
so it's like this nice orangey color. I'm just going to add a little bit of that right here where it's streaky, hoping that maybe I unstreak it. Like so. And that one is white, like a white spot. But I kind of want to give, let me see here, maybe down here, continue this spot through. So let's do that. And add a little bit more white. And now I'm going to go and actually pick some, pick out some koi fish spots on the actual koi fish. Just so we're using the same color throughout. So I want one there. I want one on this bit of his head. That one there. And some of them can be black or white, I believe, as well. Some of the spots. So you don't have to make them all that color. I'm just kind of picking where I want the eye to kind of flow. And I'm also going to add a little bit of this color to her upper lip here. Now it's so dark in the drawing that I'm probably going to have to go over several times. But that's okay. For right now that will do. Let's put a little bit right under her nose as well, right there. Let's kind of fix this up a little. Like that. A little bit of the same color right in the corner of her eye. And let's put some right on the edges of her fingertips. Now I... Oh, I know that's not a normal coloration, but and some right on her elbow here. She's a fantasy mermaid, so we can do what we like with that. Okay. So reading with pugs. Yay, Jen! <laughs> nice to see you here. I don't think I've seen you here in a really long time. Um, hi, Robin. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is all starting to dry. My palette's starting to dry. Let me just mist my palette really quick. Okay. Um, hmm. <laughs> I, you know, I should have looked up koi fish pictures. Uh, I really don't remember. I think they have black. Does anybody know? Uh, yeah, I don't. Uh, oh, thanks, Lulu. I think koi fish have black spots as well. Or dark, dark. I don't know. I'm going to mix some of my burnt umber with my ultramarine blue to get a really dark color. I don't want to use pure black. I think koi fish have black spots as well. Does it, is anybody in the chat familiar with what koi fish look like? Let's see. Nobody? Okay, well I'm just going to go for it. We're, we're going to do it. Let's just go for it. Uh, so I think I want to make, actually I kind of want to make the spot here black down here. So we're going to, we're going to do that. So I mixed burnt umber and ultramarine and a little bit of water just to get it more. So I changed my mind. This spot is going to go black now. And you see it's, it's dark, but it's not completely black. Got a little bit of blue in there. Mixed black is always a lot nicer in my opinion. Now right along the edge here I'm just taking that permanent scarlet and just kind of blending between the two. 
Now cleaning off my brush and getting it dry, grabbing some more of that other color, like that. just to kind of give it a little more pop there. Now this is streaky, I'm not digging that. I don't know how to not make it streaky, except maybe less water, let's try that. So I'm gonna mix a new mixture with less water. Let's see what happens here. Man. Streaky. Okay, so for the fin behind there, I'm going to water it down now. Really water it down. And whoop. Fun. Okay. Let's see if I can fix that. So, <laughs> have a dry, clean brush. Yep, you can lift a little. There we go. You'll see what I do with the fins later. Okay. I kind of want this. Let's grab some more of our mixed black. Go down. Why is it still streaky? Gosh. Ugh. Don't streak on me, please. I feel like I don't know if I'm making it better or worse. Maybe I should let it dry. Go over it again. Has anybody else used gouache? This is what happened to me before. This is why this stuff scares the heck out of me. Okay. Maybe that's better. Well, hmm. Wait. Uh, <laughs> hi Joanna, welcome. Hi Kathy. Nice to see you too. Okay, red, orange with a light orangey color and some have black on them. Thank you, Shannon. Okay. Good. Thank you guys. Awesome. This looks like the shadow shape. Yeah, I don't know what I'm doing now. Great. Well. Mm -hmm. It's cool. We're good. Okay, my palette is drying. Gosh, even though I misted it, this stuff is not the same as acrylic, guys. All right, so now I've got to mix my colors again. No problem, we, we got this. All right, mixing, mixing. Mm. Let's just put some scales, shapes here. So I'm just gonna, with a, a blue here, I'm just putting some half moons. And it doesn't have to be perfect. You'll see, I'm going to go over these. With more layers. And let's put some over here. Like that. And let me switch color now to the permanent scarlet, mixing that into it now, and some more white, and let's do, at this point we've lost where the illustrator put those shapes, but we can just dab in our own scale texture, we don't have to make it perfect. Like 
that. And once this dries, then I'm going to go over it again with another layer. So let's just leave that be. And um, let's see. Can you guys see okay? Um. <sighs> All right, well, hopefully. So I'm not being precise, just putting some blobs in. But I definitely want to make it feel like she's got scales here. Now I'm mixing in more white, getting it closer to her skin color, but just with a little bit more pink in it than her skin has. Kind of bring it up to about her waist there. Looks about right. Let's put a little of that color right in her belly button just to have some fun with that. Um, and also right here, right there, let's add a little of this color in the places where she's going to be more saturated, so her, I think her elbow and her arm there, her hand, and this elbow over here needs a lot of work here. Gonna do that. Let's put some right near her cheekbones and her nose. Right under her mouth here and against her chin there. So you see I'm just picking out certain areas where I want there to be more saturation. Um, okay. Like that. Like so. Also starting to just get rid of the black outlines. Okay. Let's work on some of the hair, just just to kind of help it out. Oh man, everything's drying real, real quick. All right, that's okay, we can do this. So I'm mixing in some ultramarine with some burnt sienna, and then I'm also going to mix in a bunch of white. So this is gonna make a really pretty, here, let's see. This is gonna make a really pretty kind of muted blue. So, and let's use this for the shadows. I just want to make sure not to forget her hair here. So, anywhere where there's going to be shadows in her hair, I'm just going to throw this stuff in. So you see, now I'm using the areas that we put down as a guide at the beginning. Now I'm using that as a guide for myself. Now she has white hair, but white hair does have darks and lights in it. So this is going to go in the very darkest spots. Kind of just ignoring some of this stuff. So you don't have to color inside the lines if you, if you have your own ideas what you want to do. Okay, guys. Alright, so now I'm going to mix in some of the cobalt blue. 
with quite a lot more white. Actually, I think I need more white than that even. Let's put it right there. There we go. So now let's start working that in. So I'm putting in a base layer of this color pretty much everywhere else on the hair just to get started. And then we're going to add in some highlights since this is an opaque medium. We can do that. So it's really nice. I'm just getting rid of the outlines. <laughs> How did Tilly's thing go? Oh, so you're you're okay? You're everything's going okay? I feel like I haven't talked to you in ages, Sammy. Oh, I'm so glad to see you're here and you're everything seems like it's okay. Let's see. All right. So this looks real messy. That's how all my paintings look for a while actually. Let's put a little of this color right down in here. Get rid of that outline down there. Okay. Uh. <laughs> Let's see. Tilly is now the tenth. Aww. Oh man. Well, I hope everything works out then. So you have another couple of days of Tilly watching. Um, okay, let me spray down my palette again just because I feel like this stuff is drying really quick. And let's, uh, <laughs> that's always fun. Let's. Let's go ahead and just finish up this hair anywhere where we see any of those lines. I'm just going to get rid of them. So not worrying if it looks great right now because we're going to definitely go back over this. Just trying to get rid of those black outlines. So now that we have the figure kind of going as far as where all the darks and lights are going to go. Oop, we missed some hair back here. Let me go ahead. Oh, and look, all this hair over here. Too. Wait, is this hair? Yeah, this is hair. While I'm waiting for the figure to dry, let's go ahead and add some more information to the background and the fish. So you see now we've lost the outlines. I'm not too worried about that. Um, and it's very gray but we're going to add in white to it. But I want to really see how the background works and how that all looks. So let's mix up some color here. So I'm going to use ultramarine blue, our burnt sienna, a little bit of that sky blue. Let's mix that up together and see once we add some white what that looks like. Okay, so 
so this is the I'm sorry, this is the color I'm mixing. I want to add more white to it. So this is a more muted blue than we were using at the beginning. And I'm going to go around the figure over here. Now I'm avoiding the fins because this is a more opaque color. So we're, we're not being super precise, but we're taking our time more than we did at the beginning. You can always go over it. The, the good news about being opaque is you can layer over it and it should layer even light on top of dark. Okay. So this is a really dark color. I don't know if I want it this dark all over the background, but I definitely want to highlight the figures and the, uh, the fishies in the figure rather. So I'm going to continue this from about here down. So anywhere where there's background and um, We'll decide what to do as we go up. So I know we've got, we're getting rid of all of this bright color here, but I don't want the background to be super bright. Really want the figure. Yeah, see, it's streaky though. Why is it streaky? Gosh. I'm having flashbacks to my class. This is why I didn't do well with art classes and why I ended up just teaching myself for the most part. It's because like some of my teachers, they like scarred me guys, like made me feel like I was awful. And then, you know, you get like this complex, it's not fun anymore and you don't want to do it. So don't let anybody tell you you're not good at something. If you love doing it, then just do it and don't worry about what anybody thinks. Okay, I'm destroying this flower in the process, but that's okay. All of my paintings look super messy until the end, and that is okay. I don't know any other way to do it. <laughs> Uh, all right, just getting a little more of this color, and I'm actually going to go like this. I'm ignoring her hair back there. If I want to put it back in, I can, but I was kind of getting annoyed at drawing around it, or painting around it, rather. Okay. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. Oh, what? What was she saying? 
I missed it, Louise. I missed her stream. I have to watch it back. Um, I'm missing a whole bunch of the chat. Yeah, gouache, this is actually acrylic gouache. So I, it's an acrylic polymer emulsion, opaque, matte, and water resistant. It says keep brushes wet, clean with soap and water. So I would not use your watercolor brushes with this stuff. All right, keep brushes wet. <laughs> All right, dipping back into that same bluey gray color. But yeah, I just used my finger there. Probably not a good idea, but desperate times and all that. Okay. Goodness. All right, I'm mixing up some more of that color because it's already drying on my palette. This is this is tough. This is not easy. So the acrylic gouache makes it tough because it does not re-wet. See, gouache re-wets. This does not re-wet. So once it's dry, it's dry. You have no chance of re-wetting it. So it is quite different. But that can be good or bad, depending on how you look at it. Okay. Streaky again. And I messed up her hand a little. Let me just really quick, before it dries, before it dries, let's see if I can lift it and a little bit. Kind of push it around. Okay. I'm running out of color on my palette. Ugh, streaky. How do I... Okay, well, <laughs> I don't know how to not make it streaky. Maybe add some more white in. I'm learning on the job, guys. I have no idea. All right, I think I need more paint on my palette. So I'm going to do that really quick. I'm going to add more white, more ultramarine, more cobalt. I'm running out of all my colors. And more, I have a little bit of burnt sand left. Let's see if it's still, um, Hi, Andrea. Welcome. Oh, really? She was saying that too? Yeah, I love Dee Dee. She's, she's always spot on. That's funny that we came up with that today at the same time. Well, you know, I mean, that's something that I think both of us say frequently. So I'm not surprised. Okay, mixing up more of that color. Let's see if I can... Okay, maybe... That will do it, maybe. So I just didn't add any water in. Let's see what happens. Learning on the job, guys. No idea what I'm doing. So this is a hot mess, but that's okay. We'll be good. 
everything will be fine. I'm going to rotate the page just to make it easier for myself. So I'm going to turn it upside down. Let's make sure I'm in camera still. Yeah. Okay. So adding some more white, quite a lot of white, adding some more of that sky blue, which is really like cerulean blue. And let's go, let's put, I have quite a lot on my brush, so I'm going to go up here with it. So turning it upside down just uh, makes it easier for my hands. Let's see this spot. Let's put in some more white into that. A little bit more blue. So as we go up, I'm adding more white and more blue. Kind of giving it that... Oh, I need a little water. Oh man, here we go with the streaks again, guys. I don't know what to do about that. Seems like it does okay when it's super watered down. It does okay when it's really opaque, but it's like that middle ground I'm struggling with. See the streakies? Oh man, they're happening. The streakies are back. Okay, well, you know, I'm just going to have to go over it. Okay, here we go. Go over it with a more opaque version. Thing is, is not having any water makes it harder to spread. Ugh, what the heck? What am I doing wrong? Does any has anybody ever used these before? I could use some pointers right about now. Oh my goodness, this is looking awful. We're going to have to uh, do some major TLC on this page. It's okay. No worries, do not panic. A lot of my paintings go through what I call the ugly phase, the ugly duckling phase. And then somehow I keep working on them. And they turn into a swan or just a bigger ugly duck duckling. But you don't know what it's going to be until the end. So you don't, don't give up on it now. Okay, I don't know what this is back here. I've kind of lost my way on that. But I'm making it background color. And I feel like... These fishy fins are too blue now, so I'm taking the color that I used up top here and just adding some color to those fishy fins. I'm not even worrying about staying in the lines anymore, guys. I've just totally given up on the lines. Oh my god. Okay. It's, it's good. It's good. We're good. It's fine. <laughs> Don't worry about me. I'm going to be okay somehow. 
time. Putting a little water in there. Can't take it anymore. Okay. If it's streaky, so be it. I'm gonna put some watery texture, I think, just to kind of cover up any streakiness that might occur. Let me look at the chat in just a minute, see if I've got any pointers here. Mm -hmm. This is different. I don't know if I love it or hate it or both. Maybe both at the same time. Oh man, but it sure is an adventure, huh? We're having fun, even if it doesn't turn out great. Okay, so let's put, this is a watered down version of that. Let's put down some color on those fins just so that they aren't so bright. Let's we'll see what I'm, I'm gonna do with those in a bit. Uh, we've got that back there. That is a whole fin right there. Oh, that's streaky deliciousness. Let's uh, let's see if we can fix that. So if it's streaky, go in the direction of the way you want the streaks to go, and then it will look like it's supposed to be like that. Hey, hey, hey. Okay. All right, now I want to get rid of these bright... Let's turn it around for a second. Oh, look at me making a mess. Yeah, I'm definitely going to have to cut this page out, but that's okay. Um... Hmm. Let's look at the chat and see what's happening. Um, hi, Belinda. This is the Strathmore vellum, the, the Strathmore Bristol uh, vellum. And um, it is the Turner Acrylic Wash, this, this stuff here. It's 24 set. Let me, um, I'm going to really quickly, my w water is now really lovely. My, my clean water is still clean, but let me just get rid of this dirty water and let's, let's get some more fresh water. Oh my goodness. Okay. So we've got coloring now. We've got um who else do we have here that just popped in? Hello, hello, welcome. Let's see. I'll figure it out. Well, we're gonna be just fine. Uh <laughs> okay, I think I've gotten everybody. Oh, coloring F, your Francis, did you change your name? I thought you used to have a different name. Okay, so this is really messy, but I just, at this point, want to get rid of the really bright colors and the white of the paper. So that way we're working with a good foundation that we can then add details onto. We're not fighting that white of the paper or these really bright, bright colors. Right, Abby? Are you a good kitty? Oh, what's going on here? Um, sorry, I'm just checking. I have like a whole bunch of messages. Okay. All right, they can all wait. Just want to make sure one of my clients wasn't trying to get a hold of me. We're good. All right, so I want to get rid of these 
lily pads being so bright let's that's what's drawing my eye right now so i want to take care of that um okay i hope you feel better kenny take care Aww. Uh, <laughs> all right so my palette is almost completely dry at this point like i don't have this okay so the misting thing doesn't work the same way as my acrylic paints so unfortunately the only thing that's still wet on my palette is the ones i put down recently we've got not a whole lot of other color on there so let's just really quick which one was that the, uh, i'm gonna put down some more burnt sienna and I'm also going to put down some more burnt umber. Um, let's see. Yeah, you used to be coloring Francis. Oh, okay. Well, no problem. I'm glad to see you here. I haven't seen you in a long time. Okay, so let's work on those lily pads. We were using Viridian, but I think this palette has gone sort of a gray direction, and I kind of like that because all those um, pops of red are just really standing out to me. So I think instead of making these green, I'm going to make them a really dark, dark mixed black kind of thing. I'm almost actually tempted just to get rid of them entirely but they do make sense with the lilies. Maybe I'll get rid of these two, this one, and this one, and just now. Yeah, maybe I'm gonna get rid of them all, guys. Let's see here, should I? Yeah, I might. Hmm. I'm trying to decide. Getting rid of the lily pads. Although they kind of create a little bit of interest around the composition. So now I think I'll just make them a dark, a dark blue-black kind of color. So I'm mixing ultramarine blue and burnt umber together. This is going to create a similar blue-black to the color we had on her here. Um, I already need more ultramarine. Hold on. Uh, <laughs> all right. Thanks, Joanna. Mm -hmm. All right. So we're just going to have some fun. I'm going to put this it's like a really dark blue-black. My palette looks great, guys. It looks fantastic. Really organized. I'm just going to go ahead and go right on over the whole lily pad, ignoring all the lines and all that. We can put them back in later if we want to by just kind of, since it's streaky, we can kind of use that to our advantage again. Okay. So now I'm going to go over here. I'm going to rotate the page, make it more real comfortable for me. Let's grab some more of that color. Okay, this is a fussy spot. So first I'm outlining the flower shapes and then I'm going to go back in and streak it in the right direction. That sounds funny. I don't mean it to be dirty, guys. I know this is an adult coloring channel, but I'm not being naughty here, okay? Alright. I don't mean like streaking like, okay, I'm just going to shut up. Yeah. Alright. <laughs> Okay, now I'm going to do this guy here. And then hopefully this will give us a better idea of what colors we want to use in our figure. 
I find that when you have everything in context, it's so much easier to do the final piece. Whoops, that's okay. Okay, so now I'm just using those streaky properties to my advantage here. does not rub with finger. Okay, it will lift if you do it right away. Cool. Yeah, I knew that was going to happen. It's okay. Hold on. I don't remember why I did that. So I have a clean, dry brush. I'm just going to lift up. What I just messed up with. Let's just make it look intentional. Messing up is only human, guys. So we can do it. We just got to make sure to adapt once we've done it. Rotating the page yet again. Okay, now let's see, there's this guy here. This isn't perfect, but I've fixed it enough so that way. Let me see if I can fix it a little better. There we go. Okay, so you can scrub a little bit, as long as it's wet, that should dry just fine. Okay, let's do this guy here. Yeah, I like these dark lily pads. I think they're adding a little bit of interest around the composition. Um, hi Shauna, welcome. I'm not using a black. I'm using um, ultramarine and burnt umber. I have no black on my palette. Thanks, though. I agree. You see, this is the color I'm mixing here. I'm mixing ultramarine and burnt umber together. And it's not black. It's just dark. All right, so now we have, let's actually fix these streaky bits here. There we go. And um, okay. I'm not mixing like a pro. I've, this is my first time. Oh, look at that. I got a big splooge of. Uh, this is my first time using these. So we'll see what happens. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. Clean brush. Let's get going on this here. Uh, we have some little tiny details which I'm likely to just paint right through and then add back. Yeah, I think I'm gonna do that. I don't feel like painting around all these strands of hair. So I do this a lot when I'm working in acrylic. And so I'm using a similar technique here. If it's a tiny little strand of hair, I'm just going to paint right on through it. OK, 
Okay. And I know this doesn't look great, guys, but that's what happens. Um, a lot of my paintings don't look great until right at the end. Okay, so I'm using that streaky gouache acrylic, acrylic gouache, whatever it is, issue to my advantage with the lily pads. Okay, and then here's another, okay, I need more water. Um, let's see. Oh no, I ha I've been, um, I've had quite a day. I didn't see you, sorry. Um, my landlord came in midstream. I am using a medium I'm not familiar with. Let's just say I'm a little bit more than flustered. That's okay though. It's a good thing I was dressed enough. Okay. I mean, I wasn't like wearing like full on pajamas. I'm wearing like a decent outfit, I guess. Okay, so we're gonna go over all of this later and clean it up. But just getting rid of the whites of the paper and all those bright colors. Uh, it's already so much better. Okay, so let's um, let's do the fishies, and then we can get back to the lady because now she looks real funny. Mm -hmm. um. <laughs> uh. Oh, take care, Andrea. Have a good one. Take care, an animal. Um, let's see, the, Angie, these are the Turner Acrylic Wash. So they're water-based, they dry matte, but they're permanent when they're dry and you can't lift them. These, I've never used them before. Um, I don't know how I feel about them yet. I'm struggling, but it happens a lot when you're starting out with a new medium. So that's that's par for the course, I think. Um, they dry really quickly, like acrylics. So that is something of a of a challenge. Um, I'm trying to keep my palette wet with a mister bottle, but it doesn't really work the same way. <laughs> so basically, I haven't gotten the hang of them yet. <laughs> okay. So I mixed um, white into my uh, ultramarine and burnt umber mix, and I'm just going to use that as a base for my koi fish. So I'm starting down at the bottom. Actually, let me just go right on through and get the basic shape done. Okay, so we know we have a bit in the middle need more white. I feel like any paint brand that you buy should come with like an extra tube of white or something. So now I'm just going to add, We rem remember we had that white spot to guide us as to where our highlights are going to go, so I'm just going to add some dots for scale texture. And I'm also going to really quick with a dry brush here, kind of brush over where the fins are going to go. And since it's a dry brush, it's not picking up, it's not uh, going over everything. It's just sort of here and there. It's hard to explain. Okay, this is really messy, but it's already better. Uh, so I'm going to do the same thing to this guy. And I'm going over 
the spots and everything. We'll leave his eye just so we know where the placement of that is. Just trying to get rid of all these black outlines. So watering down it a little bit so that way I can get rid of the weight of the paper but see through it a little bit. Let's do the same for this guy here. Adding a little more white to it now. So I can choose to add more spots back in if I really want to. not feeling like uh, like you have to follow that the, the, um, the coloring book page is just fine you can do whatever you want to guys okay so he's got a little eye right there yeah um <laughs> you hate Mondays too? Yeah, I don't mind Mondays usually, but today has been a rough day in general. But that's okay. You know, even on bad days, even if things don't go your way, even if your painting isn't turning out the way you want, remembering to just have fun and enjoy it anyway. I think that's the big trick there. Okay, I want to add another spot here so let's see let's just do a spot right there like that doesn't have to be I just want him to have a little bit more and I'm gonna add a spot on the dark side of this fishy too just so he has a spot and we'll add a spot right there, too. Okay. Just giving them some more spots before I go crazy with this and obliterate them all. <laughs> um, oh, thank you, Jody. Well, I'm glad you like it. I, I'm not super happy with it right now but it will get there the thing about painting with opaque medium is it really does take layers and time i feel that way especially about pages where there's a lot of black outlines i was tempted to lighten up the outlines but i thought you know i should just do them the way the book has them and then just show you guys how I get rid of them. So painting over the lines gets rid of the black outlines and then we gotta paint back more precisely when we go and actually do the finishing work. But it's okay if it looks messy for a while. Okay. It dries so fast. Oh my gosh. Alright, well, that's alright. Okay, so, oh no, is that a, what is that back there? Was that supposed to be a lily pad? I've forgotten what the actual drawing is. Well, I'm not worried about it. Let's, uh, 
Hmm. I think it was supposed to be a lily pad, but I think I've gotten rid of it. That's okay. Let's let's just pretend like it isn't there. I'm adding. I'm creating the background mixture, which is cobalt blue, sky blue, which is usually called cerulean blue in other sets, and a little bit of burnt sienna. And it's not going to match the exact color we had before, so what I do in that situation I don't know what that was supposed to be back there, but now I'm just getting rid of it. <laughs> when in doubt, paint over it. Okay, I'm going to add some over here just to make it all kind of cohesive. Get rid of that strand of hair, it's bothering me. Okay. I don't know what I'm doing, guys. I'm a hot mess right now. Yeah, this color is too blue. That's that thing there. Okay. Okay, so, oh my goodness, but I'm already feeling better about, oh, I missed a fishy up here, oh my goodness, okay, let's get him, so let's put in white with cobalt, oh, that's way too much cobalt, there we go, nice, bright, light blue. I'm just going to go right over everything. It's got a little water in it so I can see through it a little bit. And then just on my brush here just take some white and dot it in. That'll just give some scaly effect right away. Let's do that right here. Time is it? Oh wow, you've been on for two hours. Um, hi, Gilly or Jilly? I don't know how to say it. Did I say it wrong? Yep, I'm having fun. Yeah, yep. I think it's all about just um, keep going. Okay, so I'm going to work now on these flowers. We're going to get rid of all the white on the page. This is going to really help us see the, the lady in context and we can keep going from there. So I'm just using the same mixture here. Now since it is opaque, it will go right on over that background color, which is nice. Alright, here we go. 
Okay, so I've used this darker blue. It's like cobalt and white mixed together. It's already drying. Oh my gosh. Why? Okay, that helps a little. Sorry. I'm struggling with the dry time on this. Okay, and now I'm grabbing a whole bunch more white to kind of layer that in. Okay, so, so far we've used only one brush the whole time. <laughs> Let's just get in a little bit of definition here. Whoops, went right on over that. Mm -hmm. It's totally fine. Okay, and now I'm going to just take some pure white. Sort of fix a couple edges. Make them pop a little bit. We've got some way of the paper still. Let's just make that work. Let's do that with this guy here. So we've got some bits that I'd like to be white. But I'm not going to leave them the white of the paper. I definitely want to cover those lines and also I like the whole page to have paint on it. I mean it doesn't always have to, like especially with watercolor I leave a lot of the page as is. But this feels weird to leave bits of page. Okay. That's good enough for now. So now, all right, I'm not struggling anymore with that. The white paper and the bright colors. This is much easier to see where I'm going. Um, Jilly, okay. Thank you, Jilly. Sorry for not being good at this, <laughs> guys. Okay. So now I'm going to retire this brush and move on to a number five. This is a number five, it's still around. And um, let's see here, what am I going to work on first? I think I should work background to foreground and get this stuff all sorted. So first I'm going to clean up some of the background. So for that we're going to need ultramarine blue. I'm paletting up again. We used burnt umber. I've got some already on my palette but it's crusty. Right. And I did use some of that sky blue, so let's just put some of that on there, just to have some. Okay, this stuff is challenging. <laughs> but you know, I think it's that I haven't used it before. I think it would be just fine if I were experienced with it. Gosh, that's really crumbly, hold on. I 
probably a bit out of my palette there. Um, Alright. Cool. So I'm going to work background to foreground. And the reason I do this is because then as we come forward in space, we can be correcting any places where we went over the lines and so forth and just make it um, just make it better, basically. Just uh, fix it up and, and keep it, um, you know, make it look clean and not messy like it is. So the first thing I'm going to do is um, I'm going to mix let me mix up some ultramarine and sky blue together and I'm going to dull it down with our burnt umber but now I have much more ultramarine and cerulean than I do burnt umber this is what it's looking like right here Maybe you guys can see that okay it's still a really dark color but I, I'm going to mix a little bit of white in there, and then we should have a fairly nice color, yep, to, now I'm going to go down here at the bottom. I like to start at the bottom, you guys know. I think there's a fin that's supposed to be going in there, but I'm not worrying about that. I'm just going to go right on over it. And this smaller brush will create more streaks, so that's going to be interesting. Okay, so now that was a spot that was bothering me. Now, now that I kind of like this color, so I'm gonna dot into it, water it down a little bit. So in in watery situations, I do like to just sort of, in order to create gradients, because this stuff dries so quickly, instead I recommend adding dots. Dots really, so I made, I mixed in a little bit more cerulean blue and white. Dots are a great way to create transitions in water without worrying about blending. So the cerulean is a little bit brighter, but I like it, especially right around where we're putting it. So I, I have dull colors as the base, and now I can add back in color selectively and create the bright spots around the areas that I'm really looking to accentuate. So like I like her hand, so we're going to create some interest around that by putting this really beautiful, it's a mix of ultramarine, burnt umber, cerulean, and white, but it has more cerulean than the other colors now. And by working background to foreground, I'm going to allow myself the opportunity to make sure that that foreground has the right clean lines that we're looking for. So if I go over the lines right now, it's not a big deal because I can fix it when I do my finishing work on the figure and the other bits. So I hope that makes sense. Whoops. See, I just... Went over that, no big deal. Alright. Okay, now I'm dipping into the darker color. Let's just fix this mistake I made there. See, no big deal. Wow, it does dry matte, which I do like actually. That means that we could put pencil over this, I'm guessing. That might be interesting. 
I'm gonna have to try that. Mm -hmm. If we can put pencil over this stuff, I might be in love with it. Streaks don't matter if we can pencil it. Okay, I like that blue color that we have here going on. I'm gonna add a little bit more burnt umber to it, just so it's not quite so blue. I'm just gonna put a shadow under this fish. I have some water, so it's a little transparent. But I don't like that streak, so let's see what happens when I, yes, blot it. So I blotted it with a paper towel. That worked okay. Okay. Now remember we were saying before about those scales? I'm just going to go over them so that only part of them are visible. Just the edge. It gives a more scale-like shape. Okay. And I'm going to go underneath some of the ones that kind of flow into this darker red area here. So creating little half moon shapes, just sort of picking them out. Doesn't have to be perfect. And I'm not going to go and do all of them that way. I'm just picking certain areas. Okay, let's fix Mr. Fishy's mouth here. And this outline here against his uh, body there. Okay. Let's put in his eye too while we're over here with this color. Let's do the other eyes too while we're at it. So I'm just giving the outline basic, I don't know where this eye went to, but let's just put one in. And, um, okay, oh, here's another one. Okay. Like so. Alright, so... Again, we're not worrying about being perfect, but we're at this point we are kind of cleaning stuff up and starting to add detail. Um, okay. So, let's see. I'm, I'm kind of jumping around. So let me get back to fixing this fin here is behind her hair. I'm just turning it around. This fin here is behind her hair and I can still see the outlines. So let me fix that. So I'm adding a whole bunch of white to my brush. Let's see what color. Yep, that's good. I'm going over her hair a little bit, that's okay. Okay, once we get all these outlines out of the way, we can begin adding stuff back in. I just really like this color, so I'm using it in other fishy spots. So just creating those scale shadows again. Doesn't have to be perfect, guys, and you don't have to go all over the whole body. 
So just giving a hint here and there really does make it feel much more fishy. Okay. <laughs> I know I was supposed to be doing the background, but this is how things go with me. All right. So let's do, I'm just trying to think here, what's bothering me is the face. I kind of want to do the face even though probably shouldn't, but I really do want to work on that. Yeah. Let's see, what's behind, let's work on... Let's do it. Let's work on the figure more because that's what's bothering me right now. Now, so <laughs> I my palette is almost completely dry as far as the colors we were using goes. So I'm going to palette up again. So we were using permanent scarlet, which looks like cadmium red in other sets. Um, so I'm just going to if you're using other gouache or acrylic, I would say that would be the color you're reaching for. I'm going to put a whole bunch of more white on my palette. And we were also using Burnt Sienna for her skin tone. Um, the other color we were using was Cobalt, but I have plenty of that already on my palette, so I'm just going to use what I have. Okay, let's miss this and see if that helps any. Kind of bummed it doesn't work the same way, but it's cool. Okay. Um, all right, so let's mix up some more skin tone. For that, I'm almost tempted to grab a palette knife just to try and keep it more. Hold on, let me grab a palette knife. Okay, to keep it more all together, I'm going to grab, we're going to put it in that corner there. So now, here's the base of it, sorry I'm holding it up, but this is just a cheap paper plate. You guys know I reuse stuff, so, okay, yeah. Okay, now I'm going to add in a tiny bit, just a little dab, a little dab will do ya, just to knock down the brightness of that color. And I think I need a little bit. Oh no, wait, that was the wrong brown. Hold on. Down here, just making a darker version of that color by adding a little bit more of the brown and a little bit more of our blue. So now I have a red mix here, I have a, a lighter base mix, and I have a browner base mix. Okay, that'll give us a good start and then we can mix into it as we go, but hopefully using a palette knife will keep it from drying out as quickly, hopefully, that's my guess. We're just going to see where, where that takes us. Okay. Learning on the job, guys. <laughs> All right, so let's um, let's just uh, start out first by doing the shadows. And what I'm gonna do is I'm mixing a little bit more of that cobalt into the dark, the dark brown 
base mix that we did at the very end there. So this is the color that I have here. So I mixed a little bit of cobalt into this bit and we're getting like a nice shadowy color. I'm going to just start at the hairline. I actually want to add a little bit more cobalt and a little bit more burnt sienna. Make it even darker. Okay, here we go. So this is the color. I'm going to start with my darks and work to light. So this is the color. It's, it looks fairly dark. I'm really going to put this in certain spots though. So I'm going to actually start up here in her hair. Work my way down. Like so. I added a little bit of water to my mix to just to get it to move a little easier for me. Let's see if that helps. Yes, yes it does. So at the base of her hair, at her hairline, around her face, I'm adding this color. I've got her little ear there. I'm also going to add this on her eye and on her eyebrows. I know she's got white hair, but let's just give her some dark eyebrows. Okay. We're also going to put this right there and right here. I'm just basically reestablishing some darks in her face with this color. a little line right there. I haven't decided what color her eyes will be. But let's mix in, <clears throat> let's do the whites of her eyes. So let's just mix in some white to the color we have right now. And a little tiny bit of cobalt blue. So it's a little bit bluer and brighter than the color the color we were just using. Let's do just the whites of her eyes. Don't worry about going over her iris right now. That's fine. We're gonna go over it again. Okay. And I'm gonna use this same color really quick just to add a little bit more shape to that bit of her hair since it's a very similar color. And also, to go over this bit right here, where that bit of hair goes over her face like that. I hope that you guys can see this okay. And just grabbing a little bit of pure white on the very end, the very tip. We'll add a lot more white into her hair later. Okay, so let's fix her eyes again now that that looks like it's drying up. And of course, so is the color of my palette. So let me mix up. I'm mixing up some ultramarine and some umber, burnt umber make a nice dark color here and we're going to fix her eyes so first I'm doing the lash line and then her iris and we'll put in the bright color it's so tiny though guys I don't even know if you can see this very well, but it's 
such a tiny little spot here. So I'm not worried too much about putting a whole lot of color in there. Okay, and let's use this dark color for just under her nose, just at that nostril there. Okay, and then let's mix in some white with that color that we just made. And I'm just going to fix this little bit right here, like right above her eye, that little eye crease, whatever it's called. Like that. And this here can get some color. Alright, let me just uh, hold on. Cleaning off my palette, grabbing some light skin tone. Went a little overboard there, so I'm just going to really quickly go over that. Put a little dot of, color, of bright spot right there. There we go. Let's fix under her eyes there too. We went a little crazy before. It all can be fixed because of this, the nature of this medium. Okay. Let's just uh, do a little bit more here. Now I'm going to fix that iris. <laughs> the good news about this being opaque is that we can go over it. There we go. So now I can put the darks back in. It's a back and forth. This is such a tiny little spot, guys. It is tricky to get it right. So sometimes it takes a couple back and forth to get it looking the way you want it to, and that's okay. There we go, this is starting to look better. It's a tiny little eye. Okay, so I think the only thing, oh, did I bump the camera? Of course I did. I want to like put my head over it and I can't. Okay, so now let's add a little bit more darkness. And the skin tone, the darker skin tone color, I'm going to mix a little bit of that and a little bit of the pinky color together. I'm going to go right on the edge of the nose here, right in the corner of the eye there, and right in the corner of the eye here. Just to give her a little color around her eyes. Okay, so I went into her cheekbone area as well, a little bit too far, so I'm going to lift that before it dries, just like so. Alright, so let's use that same color, which I quite like, it gives her like a little glow. I'm going to use that on her nose right here on the end. Let's use that on her mouth as well, but I'm going to get a fresh mix because it's starting to dry. Hold on. Okay. So this is a more powerful version of that color. I'm going to add in the same color gray, 
that we were using. Oh, nope, it's dry, so we're going to make some more. Gosh, this stuff dries like nothing. Let's see. Oh, thank you. Um, Donatina? Is that your name? I don't know if I've seen you here before. Thank you very much. It's getting there. Let's just test the color. I'm going to test it on that bit of hair. Looks okay. So I'm going to put that right there on her teeth. We'll let that set and then we'll add a little more darks to it. I'm also just going to add this to little bits here and there. Use it up. <laughs> okay, yeah, so now that's starting to dry. Now I can mix in a little bit more dark to it. I don't want to go crazy here, but let's let's see if we can get this. So just under her lip here. And right there. Yeah, there we go. Like that. Man, it is so tiny, guys easy to mess up. So just take your time, go slow, no need to stress about it. Okay, and then let's add some more of that pink color because I'm over the line a little bit. That's okay. It's opaque. I'm going to add a little touch of pure white. Right there. Add her cupid's bow. Right along this edge of her mouth. There we go. I don't know if you guys can even see it. It's so tiny. Let me see if I can zoom in a little more. Oh wow, it looks a lot duller. Let's see here, why does it look... Nope, that's not it. Yeah, that looks closer. Sorry guys, I think the sun went down and it changed my colors. Oh no, that's too crazy. There we go, that's more true. Let's just, yeah, that's a little bit better. Yep, I'm fairly pink, so that's right. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay. There we go. Yeah, the blue looks better. Okay. So let's see here. I'm going to mix up some more dark colors, so I'm using Ultramarine and Burnt Sienna. And let's just fix her eyes and then we can move on to the next bit. So I'm just, again, just working back and forth. This needs to be darker there and darker here. It's so tiny, guys. I don't know if you can really tell from the video. Okay, and then it's funny because you take out all the outlines and then you put them back in, but... All right. And her eyebrow looks a little too bright. I mean, too, yeah, too bright. Of course, now I made it too dark. That's okay. I'm 
So just adding contrast around her face, just to really like bring it into focus and make it look like that's the focal point of the drawing. Okay. Now I'm going to work the the darker skin tone that we mixed up over just this chin spot here. I wanted a little bit of that, but not that much. Let's see here. There we go. And let's work a little bit over this spot that I went overboard on. Put a little bit of shadow right under this bit of hair. Like so. Now I'm going to switch to the lighter skin tone that we mixed up ahead of time. Kind of wet and wet work that together. Okay, so I'm not super happy with this, but it's not as bad as it was. Okay, so let's wash off my brush now, add some bright pure white highlight. I'm going to put that right there on the end of her nose. Right here. I'm working it into that wet bit that we, I just put down. Also, right here. That's where the, the highlights would hit. And now, working that dark skin tone. There we go. I'm just trying to figure out how these dry. Okay, I'm going to water that color down now. Okay, and then let's use that same color at the edges of the face again right under this bit of hair. So I'm going to go over that bit with brighter color, but I really want to get the skin tones on her face pretty much where I want them to be, so that way when we go over it with the hair, we're not going to struggle with that. Okay, so let's put that color here as well. Let's see, am I in camera? Yeah. Okay. So now let's clean up this shoulder a little bit. I don't know if it dries darker or not, but we'll find out. Just cleaning up all the mistakes we made before. And it's totally okay, you know, you guys, we all make mistakes, so don't beat yourself up if you do, because nobody's perfect. So instead of worrying about it, just get creative and you can figure out a way to, to solve any problems you make. Okay. Let's fix up her neck a little bit better. 
Oh, that color dried too, huh? Mm -hmm. Typical. There we go. I think there's a fin there. I'm just going to go right on over it for right now. Um, hi, Dorothy. Welcome. <laughs> oh, Joanna. Well, the thing is, is, you know, this is a typical process for me. Um, a lot of people might give up, but um, what, what you realize is like when you've painted a whole bunch is that um, it's pretty normal to go through an ugly phase of a, of a drawing or a painting. But if you give up before you're done, then you'll never know where it'll take you. And a lot of the times what starts out looking really terrible ends up looking all right. I mean, the, the last Jowie Lim painting I did, it had, there was one phase, and you can see I did a time-lapse video of it on my Instagram. There was one phase of the painting where it just looked terrible. I mean, it was awful. It looked like she needed, like, a nose job, and there, it was just really bad. But I didn't give up. I fixed all the issues. And I, that's one of my favorite paintings that I've done from Jolly Lim's book. So you just got to kind of go with it. Don't let it discourage you. And remember that the process isn't always straightforward. Hi, Dorothy. Welcome. No, Joanna, um, the link... Oh, thanks, Shannon. You've got it. Mm -hmm. Nope, this is from Jowie Lim's uh, Friends of Nature coloring book. And I've done several other um, illustrations from her book, both... Uh, I did an acrylic painting from her book and also um, a... Uh, what you call it? A bunch of uh, color pencil ones. So. Come on. Oh, everything's dry. So that's the thing I'm struggling with the most with this stuff. Is it dries real quick. Yeah, I, yeah, using a new medium maybe wasn't the smartest thing, but it's okay. You guys know I'm on my channel. I'm not afraid of making a fool of myself. I did that with the, the pan pastels, too. It's all going to be okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Let's All right. So I don't know if we're going to be able to finish this in one sitting. Maybe we can come back to it if you guys are interested in seeing how I finish it up. Okay. 
beginning, eh? Um, that's a great question, Joanna. I'm not sure, but it is matte. It's it's definitely so it's acrylic gouache, so it's matte. So I'm guessing you can. That's a guess, though. I haven't tried it yet, but hold on, I could. Let me just uh. Hold on, I got the rush in my mouth. Um, let me just really quick go over this one spot that I'm not digging. And then we'll... There we go. Okay. Let me, um... Let's just, for the hell of it, let's give that an experiment. Let me just spray my, you know. All right, let's see. I've got this bit here of, actually, actually, hold on. I've got, I, I played with it a little bit before. Let's use it. And I'll just grab just for the heck of it, so we can see really easy. It's not in there. I'm gonna grab a couple of different brands and see what we can find out. So, just cause I know So I have a couple of different brands of pencils here. I have the Prismacolor White, which we know is fairly opaque. I'm going to go over this dark spot. Hey, 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 look at that. Oh my gosh. Okay. I've got the Crown Dosh Luminance White, which, yep, does the same thing. And let's go over with a Polychromos. Yeah. So yes, you can pencil over these paints with pencil. Boom. So that's amazing actually. Um, okay. <laughs> Let's grab a little white. Let's put a little sparkle in her eye while we're Here we go, a little more. All right, guys. Yeah, it's getting there slowly but surely. So let's add, let's do some more Okay, so using the palette knife is a great way to keep your paints dry, I mean, paints wet a little bit longer. I'm adding this pink color right to underneath her breast here. I'm gonna actually add a whole lot more hair right around here, but I do wanna have some of that in place before I do that. Just to kind of, and I'm going to add the same color to her elbow there. And we have this dark color here. I'm just going to touch up and fix up this one spot. So we can kind of, you, you guys can kind of get a sense of how I am touching up this piece so that way it'll really not look so completely um, messy anymore and really start to look more clean. But this takes some time. The details are what take some time. I'm grabbing some white. 
Um, yeah, I'm just learning it too. Yeah, um, Scarlet, it's, it's acrylic wash. It's not, it's nothing I've ever used before, but yeah, it looks like you can pencil over it just fine. So that's fun. So after we're all done, we can maybe do some touch up that way too. That would be fun. Um, I think it works for just about anything, anything you feel like. Uh, awesome. <laughs> You're welcome, Joanna. Yep, uh, this is my first time using gouache since 1997. And this is acrylic gouache. It's not exactly the same. You can't re-wet it. Um, it does not act the same way. It's a little bit different. I, it's hard to explain. It's like... I don't know. Different. <laughs> All right, though. We'll be fine, guys. We're going to be just fine. So it's a little bit too much for me, so I'm going to cover up quite a lot of that. get going soon guys but if you guys want me to see more I mean if you want to see me do more of this then let me know and I can finish this up on camera for you but you can see here we're already starting to make sense of it I'm sorry, Shauna. Shauna's leaving. Have a great one. Oh, good luck at the eye doc. Okay. Let me zoom out just so you guys can get an overall sense of this. And since I'm going to be cutting out this picture because we've made a total disaster of the of, you know, I've just been a, a right mess today. I'm going to peel off the tape because that's one of my favorite things to do. And we can just cut it out if we want to. But yeah, I have a feeling that the, the paint seeped under the tape right here. Yes, it did. Oh my gosh, it does look so much better though. But I'm not going to be doing so much more to the background that I, I don't really need it there anymore. Yeah, so for that reason right there, we're going to definitely cut this out and put it on something else. Oh my gosh, that is so satisfying to do this. Okay, so it looks like I didn't apply the tape too well, but if you recall, when I applied the tape, I had a cat in my arm. So I probably just didn't stick it down well enough. That's okay. So that's where we're at so far with it. looks a lot better without the tape. <laughs> so I'm going to get going because I have to feed Abby her dinner and give her her medicine. But um, if you guys want to see me work more on this, then I can do a part two. You'd like to see it finished? Okay, yeah. So we'll do a part two. Um, and I'll try to just do it in pure acrylic gouache. Again, for people who are just coming in, 
Um, the stuff we're using is this here. It's called Turner Acrylic Gouache. And I have the 24 color set, but we only used, this is my palette, this is how it looks at the end. We used only a small amount of color. So we used the Cobalt Ultramarine Sky Blue for the blues. We used the Burnt Sienna and the Burnt Ochre. We used the Permanent Scarlet, which looks like Cadmium Red to me. And we used White. So those are the only colors I used to make the entire piece. Um, we did use a little bit of Viridian Hue at the beginning, but we've completely covered it over now. Um, so, yeah. I think that's about it. Thanks, Shannon. I'm glad you like it. And thank you, everybody, for putting up with me today. I'm sorry about the interruptions and the... Um, the general me not knowing how to use it kind of thing. That's what happens though when you're learning on the job. <laughs> but um, yeah, I think we'll uh, we'll definitely keep going on this. We'll do a part two, and so you guys can see how I would finish it. All right, thank you guys so much for coming. I hope you have a wonderful, magical time coloring. Bye. <laughs>